strayed out of thought and time. The stars wheeled overhead, and every day was as long as a life age of the Earth. I did what not the end. I felt life in me again. I've been sent back until my task is done. My name's Rindy, and today we will briefly explore the mission for not the 13, 12, 11, or even 10 combat fire cape, but for one that's the first of its kind on old school RuneScape, a single digit 9 combat fire cape. Before we start this video off, I just wanted to say, no, this isn't me and neither is this, but he is yet a PBM god who I will link in the description below, and who you all should definitely go check out and have the utmost respect for. As if it were not for him, and the challenge he brought upon myself, I would never have even looked in the right places or even questioned once again what is possible. So let us ask, what is possible? As you can see here, Exact took on the poison flinch method I priorly used, but with his own twist, and added some recoils to negate some combat XP in the caves. This resulted in a final combat as low as 14, which is even above perfect RNG with the 1 in 4 chance of poisoning each NPC, all while starting at the lowest combat possible stats at wave 1. Therefore, technically at the brief time this record was set, he had in fact sealed the deal with the lowest combat fire cape record, meaning it would be physically impossible at the time to beat this record with any conventional means. So how was I to overcome something so sealed, and by not just one combat, but several? Well once again, if you have learned nothing from my Lore of the Better series, this is the most important point. Thinking outside the box can get you places you would never expect. And a huge motto I live by is actually work smarter, not harder. So once again, I had to go back to the drawing board and come up with some extremely out of the box theories, and luckily, one was found. When looking for a way to overcome the unbeatable combat, I would need either one, a major bug such as a path, or two, a way to just avoid all combat XP and do neutral damage, which is damage that doesn't grant XP and therefore wouldn't level my combat as much inside the caves. Well, number one has never existed in the old school RuneScape game and would have surely gotten the account banned anyways. So number two though made me question everything, which resulted in me looking further into the idea of using recoils within the caves for nearly zero combat XP granted. So Rings of Recoil do a small percent damage neutrally to NPCs for every time you take a damage from that NPC. The problem was though, each recoil only holds 40 points of damage before breaking, and my inventory is only 28 spaces. To get this cape I would roughly need 8000 points of total damage, or otherwise known as 200 recoils, which obviously wouldn't fit inside a 28 space inventory. So how would I overcome this problem? The Ring of Suffering is an item released a few years ago and was later buffed to give an effect that allows you to charge it with up to 2500 rings of recoil, and uses that same recoil effect. The problem with this ring though is it requires 75 hit points to wield, and all items of course have a wield requirement for wielding the item. Makes sense, right? Well let's say I might never have to wield that ring at all. Now this is not bug abuse at all, in fact almost everything I've done in my videos up until this point is probably more deemable as abuse than this extremely simple mechanic, which I will now explain. So recoils are player specific, they hold the same charge until you either use up all the charges on the ring or break that ring. So let's say I have 28 rings of recoil with 39 charges each since they are all made player specific and have the same charge. If I break one ring, the remaining 27 will go back to 40 charges and so on. But what if I simply put one of these rings of recoil into a ring of suffering? Well, it will obviously take that remaining charge of the recoil and transfer it over to the ring of suffering. Because, well, it's not going to dupe your recoil charge and give your ring of suffering an invalid charge. That in itself would be a bug and therefore this is in fact an intended mechanic of the ring of suffering. So since the charges are player specific, I'm able to transfer over a charge off a singular ring of recoil in noted form into a ring of suffering and that recoil would obviously have the same charge as the unnoted recoils I'm then using. Therefore, this would entirely refresh the charge of an unnoted recoil and all other recoils, 
since once again each is player specific, allowing for an entirely new but tedious method of infinite recoils within the inventory for anyone under 75 hit points. But to do this I would have to sacrifice several inventory spaces, as well I would not have the defense bonuses from the original Ring of Suffering, and well, I would have to manually use rings and make sure they don't break on charges under 40. So now with just this simple out of the box idea, I could damage nearly every NPC in the entire cave without getting a sliver of combat XP. All I had to do was out eat the melee NPC's damage and tick eat the long range attacks of the mage and range NPCs. So even after this huge discovery, there were many many problems, and I would have to make an entirely new method to complete the caves. The first problem was this, I deemed at the time I would need 43 prayer, mainly because I was 10 HP and needed to kill a lot of the NPCs by getting right up in their face and letting them hit me. This put me in poor placements for many of the waves, as well I deemed protection prayers necessary on this build because some lures would be impossible if not near impossible to set up without them. And even if it were possible by performing some one prayer lures within the waves, you would need a massive amount of combo tickets and an extremely limited inventory. This is because traditionally ticketing from far away can result in a second attack registered on your prior HP and therefore can easily kill you. Now another major problem I would overcome is this. Standing far away from an NPC such as a major range while their projectile is launched cuts all interfaces. As well, putting a ring of recoil into a ring of suffering requires an interface dialogue to be used and several actions to be performed. Therefore, if I try to use my ring of recoil from a distance while in combat and am too far away, the NPC hits won't give me enough tick clearance apart from one of the attacks since the ring of suffering interface will literally never pop open. Meaning I have to either 1. Be in a safe spot to refill my ring of suffering before my unnoted recoil breaks, or 2. Be up close and personal to the NPC to allow for his long distance attacks to hit me much sooner before his next projectile attack fires. And therefore, this is another instance I would yet again need to use my prayer on some waves and it put me in some poor placement situations. The last problem I would have to overcome with this method was the 180 meleeers, as these NPCs start to quickly heal themselves if you are directly in combat with them and if they are under half HP, meaning they would easily outheal my recoil damage 
even if I were to somehow melee tick eat them. So here is the only other instance besides 43 prayer where I would have to sacrifice combat XP, as I would have to roll a 1 in 4 poison chance from a flinch spot for many many level 180 melee NPCs, and to do so, hit at least a 1 each time. This would result in 544 XP total gained in the fight caves if I were to roll an average poison chance throughout the entire cave, and I would put this onto the defensive stat until level 5, almost level 6, since defense gives the least amount of combat within the calculation. From here I would start sacrificing attack and strength XP from level 1 to almost level 2 if necessary, to just barely save myself from getting that double digit combat cape. Lastly, I would now take on Jad, and well from here I had started lagging a bit and had quite a few restores left. So I decided I would be extra safe while leaving range protect on the entire time and stepping in and out for every single one of Jad's attacks. This is because the tick eat for Jad's range attack is about half the amount of time as his mage attack from a far distance. After almost 10 years of attempting low level fire capes, I had finally for the first time in my life completed a cape at under 10 combat, being now in the single digits. Later that day I decided to do some heavy GE bank standing, and my suspicions with the lag were correct, as the world started once again getting DDoSed and totally dropped out. So luckily I had completed that JAD wave just a few hours prior to this issue, but who knows, maybe there were more attempts on my behalf prior to this, and maybe in my previous attempts I wasn't so fortunate with the lag after all. Once again, I wanted to congratulate Exact on his recent achievements. He is honestly one of the best mechanically skilled players in the game, and I would even say he is far better than myself. By using out of the box theories though, I hit a major goal for myself that I've had since starting to do these low level fire capes. This record may someday be broken with some insane sheer skill and a little alteration, but I am happy in just finding out that this was possible. Theory crafting is what I truly love the most. As some have said hilariously, this is like the space race of RuneScape, but it is also an extremely friendly competition. And though this has been a true experience, and although fun, I will probably need to put myself aside from this for quite some time now. It has been extremely mentally demanding, for instance, to sit here hoping not to lag or mess up for 30 hours solid of tick eating. Not to mention being as paranoid as I am, thinking someone has found my methods before I even got to use them, 
and I had put 16 hours into a day after constant failures. But I'm glad I was able to make at least one response to the record at one point in time, and I appreciate you all for coming and watching me do just that. You all have helped my channel grow so immensely over this last year, and I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year.